Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket from Rev TV. You'll get every game every Sunday afternoon in crystal clear HD. That's over 220 football games for the entire regular season. Plus, NFL Sunday Ticket gets you up to eight live games on one screen with Game Mix. You'll get that died and woke up in football heaven experience when you include NFL Red Zone, a channel dedicated to every scoring play from every game and all your fantasy football teams. Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket. Call 601-8992 today. The Prime Minister confirms government is considering a new tax to fund national health insurance. The AG sends calls for more negotiations over Bahamar. Two men murdered just hours apart, plus a man killed in a tragic accident. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Kyle Joaquin and NB12 starts right now. Welcome once again to NB12. Prime Minister Perry Christie has revealed that government is considering imposing a new tax to fund national health insurance in the 2016-2017 budget. He made this revelation during an hours-long meeting with government's NHI consultants, members of a special task force, and officials from the Ministry of Health and National Insurance Board at the office of the Prime Minister today. Christie said while taxation in the second phase of NHI is always possible, Government will do it in a sensible way that is in the best interest of the country and does not disrupt the economy. Bonnie Toot reports. Though government does not intend to introduce a national health insurance tax when that plan is rolled out next year, Prime Minister Perry Christie revealed today a tax is a possibility during the second phase. However, he was quick to point out that the government will not do anything to disrupt the economy. And anything we do will be matched to what the economy can absorb at a particular time. So even if rates come in the next budget year, those rates will in fact conform to what we would regard as the obligations of the government to ensure that the economy is not unduly disturbed by any rate or tax that we impose. In his 2015-2016 budget communication in the House of Assembly back in May, Christie said government has no immediate plans to impose additional taxes to fund NHI and suggested that to do so would plunge the economy back into recession. However, as he met with government consultants on NHI and members of a special task force at the office of the prime minister today, Christie said there is a possibility an NHI tax could be imposed in the 2016-2017 budget. It's, it's always possible, but you know, we're going to do it the sensible way. I think the government made a commitment to taking steps that are in the best interest of the economy of the country and doing nothing to disrupt the economy of the country. And so that's what will govern us that we will watch very carefully the economy. We'll, we will be um, in discussion with stakeholders in the economy because they have to be a part of it. The Prime Minister said once government dishes out millions to enhance the public health care system and Bahamians see those improvements, he believes paying a tax would be easier for them to digest. I was overly impressed at the plans that we are committing ourselves to um, in turning the health establishment in the Bahamas into one of a kind in the region. There'll be none to match it. And, and, and um, the units being proposed and um, what we're going to be putting on that plant, um, in that plant, PMH, um, really encouraged me greatly. And the Bahamian people will know that it is something that they have to pay for, and I'm sure they'll be prepared, um, as they have in the past, paid for it. The official opposition has made it clear it would not support further taxation. The Bahamas Christian Council has also said an NHI tax would be a bad idea. Well, Christie says that's why government decided against imposing a new tax at the start of the scheme in January 2016. We do not want to start with people misunderstanding what we're doing 
and having a raging debate over whether or not we should introduce a program that is more fundamental to the existence of our civilization in this country than any program we've ever done. And I'm, I'm now stating that because I'm now talking about addressing the disparities in health care where those who have money are able to buy what they want and those who do not have are faced with the perilous situation that involves whether or not they live or die. When asked about the cost of NHI, Christie said an exact figure is still unclear, but he hopes to arrive at a consensus on that with stakeholders. Government consultant Sanagest International has estimated NHI could cost anywhere from $362 million to $633 million annually. However, the Bahamas Insurance Association put the annual cost at around $1 billion. No matter what approach government takes to NHI, Prime Minister Christie says there will be people who disagree. That's why he says their ultimate goal is to roll out this crucial plan with minimal disruptions. Reporting from the office of the Prime Minister for NB12, I'm Vonik Tude. And as government aggressively forges ahead with its plan to implement NHI, at least one leading physician who works in private and public systems says government is going about public health care reform all wrong. Paige McCartney reports. Oncologist Dr. Devon Curling says before really forging ahead and really pushing national health insurance, the focus should be placed on making adjustments to the current system. So for instance, there are patients in the family islands that have to come to Nassau just to get blood work done sometimes. That's a huge wastage of cost, energy. Um, there are so many other things that we need. We need to figure out we need a hospice. So patients that are dying. What happens is you have someone who should be in a hospice who's now sitting in the hospital for two, three weeks and the emergency room is getting more and more packed. Like many other medical professionals, curling is on the front line of health care and says it's difficult to treat patients who regularly tell him that they cannot afford the sometimes life-saving drugs they need. He said the focus should be on funneling resources to address these kinds of situations first. In other words, we need to fix our, um, our procurement of drugs, for instance. We're constantly getting into shortages. We need to improve our delivery system. In other words, we have a large physician staff, but they're not necessarily de deployed in the way that they could be utilized best. So. Before we go and we sink a whole ton of money into instituting the NHI, I think we really need to tweak the systems that we have here. Certain that there's no physician on the island that will say universal health care is not a good thing. Curling said those who work in the field are hopeful that government would consider their input, that there are far too many things that need to be tweaked and improved before a tax is added to fund expanded public health care. Um, so we need to attack these things first so that we can actually have a system that's flowing, working properly, and then say, okay, now that I've got a system that's in place where I'm actually seeing everybody and I'm getting everything done, how can I tweak this and what type of national health insurance now can I add? But if you don't do that first, I think you end up spending lots of new tax money um, on fixing a, a system. You want that system tweaked as best as you can before you institute a new tax. Curling says the Bahamas already has a top-notch health care system that can rival any other in the region, never turning away any patient in need of emergency care. He says all of the pieces are there. They just need to be utilized properly. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney. Attorney General Alice Minard Gibson today rejecting the assertion that the jobs of the 2,000 employees at Bahamar could have been saved if the Chapter 11 bankruptcy process had continued in Delaware. In a statement this afternoon, the AG said, the government is deeply disappointed that Bahamar's insolvency led to the provisional liquidators obtaining sanction to make the employees redundant and that the government had consistently sought to minimize the consequences of Bahamar's insolvency for its workforce. The AG continued saying that on August 26th, the Bahamar filed with the bankruptcy court a proposed Chapter 11 bankruptcy reorganization plan, but that plan, she said, 
was entirely hypothetical, and it offered no hope for, of avoiding workforce reductions. That plan, she said, hinged entirely on the availability of at least $400 million to $600 million of exit financing for which Bahamar management did not purport to have any commitment, any commitment from anyone. She urged the principal stakeholders to continue negotiations without delay or take what she calls further measures necessary to achieving paramount objectives. Well, two murders this morning have pushed the murder count for this year to 124. The latest killing happened after 10 this morning on Tonic Williams Darling Highway, where a man was found lying on the sidewalk covered in blood. This man was at home along with his brother when uh, persons accosted them armed with handguns and uh, began discharging shots at both of them. This uh, male here on the scene ran from the residence at Eaton Road towards Tonic Darling Highway where he collapsed in the street. The victim is said to be Lyndon Taylor, also known. The victim is said to be Lyndon Taylor, also known as Ping. His brother was also shot during the melee, but is said to have non-life-threatening injuries. Just around the corner in Yellow Wall, the gardens at the victim's home, family members were outside weeping and too distraught to speak with the media. The car, which the brothers were standing in front of, still sits in. We do not have a motive at this stage for this homicide here this afternoon, but appeal to persons who would have any information to provide that information to us and help us to advance this investigation. But just hours before that, another man was shot and killed, this one on Augusta Street. 8 a.m. this morning, police were called to Augusta Street to reports of a male being shot. And what we know with that incident is that a this 37-year-old male, he was standing in the street along with a female companion uh, when persons pulled up, four persons we believe pulled up in a blue Honda vehicle. According to Roll, the man exited the vehicle and one of them opened fire on him. The man, who was shot multiple times, ran away from his assailants but collapsed in a nearby yard. EMS personnel pronounced him dead on the scene. Investigations continue. However, with these two murders, the count for this year has already passed last year's murder count. There were 123 murders recorded in 2014, but a record number of murders were recorded back in 2011 at 127. More tragic news, a man was killed through Grace Terrace just off Bernard Road this morning when the green Chevrolet he was working on from underneath was tipped by another vehicle and fell, killing him instantly. Head of the Road Traffic Division, Superintendent Craig Stubbs said it was just after noon that they received a call and when they arrived on the scene, they met the man's body lying on the side of the road. Our initial investigation revealed that the male was under the car doing some repairs. Uh, the car was uh, being held up by a wooden uh, block, also with a concrete, uh, a vehicle that was reversing, accidentally would have bumped that vehicle and the vehicle fell on the deceased. Stubbs said the man suffered severe head trauma and was pronounced dead on the scene. Family and friends of the victim watched in horror as officers processed the scene from a distance. Now as for the driver of the vehicle that accidentally hit the car, Stubbs said he apparently didn't see the car or the victim underneath, but an investigation is now underway. The investigation will go further. We love the if you look at the, the roadway, there were some breaches made as relates to the statue laws of the Bahamas. There were some breaches that were breached. Uh, we're going to look at it and then we're going to address those concerns. And the investigation will then go to the coroner's office where we will have the final say. We will finally make a final determination as to if charges are to be uh, brought against the driver. Stay with us. There's more news after the break.